Okay, part two of the heart, Matthew chapter six. So I hope you're not getting the idea and we're looking at the physical organ of the body, but we're looking at what the Bible says. It's our, it's our inner self. God has a heart and, and you don't have a physical pumping blood heart. He did when Jesus Christ was on this planet. For 33 and a half years, God had a physical heart that pumped, that pumped the blood and that blood, Acts 20, 28, was God's blood. But we're looking at who we are and Jeremiah again about our heart. Before you say, I'm good, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know it? Oh, I'm a good person. I never, you know, I never killed anybody. I, no. Wicked and deceitful, the Bible says. And now when we're talking about heart here is there is a, a cause today that you can get a heart transplant. And if I were to get a heart transplant, that moment after the transplant, it's not going to be, I'm going to forget all the Bible knowledge that God's given me. I'm not going to be able to preach and teach and witness anymore because that heart of me is gone that got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we looked about in the Old Testament. And if you were to give me a lawyer's heart, doesn't mean I'm going to be able to go in a courtroom and have suits against parties and stand before a judge and give a case. Or get a heart of a doctor, and I'll be able to go in a, doc, in, a, in a hospital and say, hey, I can do these procedures because I have a doctor's heart. That's not the case. I can get a heart that will help a heart that's broken, that's damaged, that's been ruined somehow. But that's not going to get me away from God. That's not going to take me away from the knowledge of the Bible. That's not going to get me any further knowledge. It'll get me physical life. But that won't get me spiritual life because that's not the heart I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Acts, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 that we looked at. But Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is. Let's stop right there. What's your treasure? Ask you a question right now. What Right now, what would you want? What would you gather? What would you put into a safe, what would you lock up, what would you chain, what would you want, what would you be desire? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Well, I just can't give to the Lord. I just can't do for the Lord. I, your heart's not right with God. Plain and simple. Your heart is going after something else. Your treasure that you have put into your heart is for something else. If I can go do a worldly thing more than I can do for God, then you have a worldly heart. If I want to do God and put away the worldly, I'm going to church and never mind my, my, my family outing, and your heart is set. Your treasures are set upon God. It's that simple. Matthew 12, 35. Matthew 12, 35. Matthew 12, 35. The Bible says, A good man, I hear people tell, I'm good. A good man of a good treasures of his heart, oh, there's the treasure, bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. There's no other illustration a frustration when you're preaching the gospel on, on the street for us, what I know personally, I guarantee anybody who has public ministry has their story. There's nothing better to have somebody come up to you and say, well, I'm a Christian. Jesus would not do that. I'm a Christian. I wouldn't do that. I'm a Christian. Our church don't do that. If you don't spread the gospel, something wrong with your heart. When the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Problem. The gospel's good. Gospel means good news. I've had people come up to me. I'm a Christian. See my tattoo? That tattoo is not good. Bible says, print no marks upon you. Make no cuttings in the flesh. I've had people come up to me with a can of beer. I'm a Christian. That's not good. That's not good. That's an evil heart. A good heart would be, wow, yeah, I got those same God, I got those same gospel tracts. Hey, I passed them out. Well, where'd you get those tracts from? 
And you turn around, oh, well, I'm going to write to them. I'm going to get me some. Oh, thank you very much for doing what you do. We we go to this place and we do this thing to, to, for the gospel. We do this for this place for the God. I'm so thankful to see you're doing this for the gospel. That's good. Remember where we looked at discouraging and encouraging the heart? A good person will say, you're doing what the Bible, you're doing what pleases God. Keep on going, keep on doing. A, a, a bad heart, a wicked heart, an evil heart. According to the scripture said, uh, isn't that what Jesus would do? No, it is. You just don't know your Bible. Matthew 13, 19. Matthew 13, 19. When, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, the word, the word, and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one, the devil, the devil. Mark 4, 15, Satan. Luke 8, 12 is the devil. And catches away that which was sown in his heart. Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. When you preach the gospel, according to Mark 4, Luke 8, and Matthew 13, you are putting that seed in their heart. It's there. Preaching, teaching, gospel tracts, knocking on doors, wherever, however you preach the gospel. The Bible says you are putting seeds in that heart. Now, you're not opening up their throat. You're not opening up a chest cavity. You're not inserting an IV. You're not inserting a needle, as you would do drugs and that other nonsense stuff. But the Bible says the gospel is being planted in those hearts. And one of the enemies, one of the discouraging things that we do have is that Satan will enter into that heart and grab that word. Why will he enter that? How does he do it? What efforts does, does Satan do to prevent the gospel from being received? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That heart has been hardened like Pharaoh's heart. That heart has been darkened. That heart does not want to reach out to God as we already discussed in part one. This is part two. There is a part one. So chapter 15, verse 8. Chapter 15, verse 8. The Bible. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. There's that mouth. Remember we talked about the mouth? Romans 10, 9 and 10. The mouth. And honoreth me with their lips. But their hearts is far from me. Oh, what, what a terrible cause. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And God's like, what? You're not near me. I don't know you. It's a shame. With their mouth, they're right with God, but with their heart, there's a big difference. There are people who talk Jesus. There are people who use Jesus' name as a cuss. But they're far from God. Their heart ain't there. They're not saved. That verse, you're not saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. You just said a prayer. That's not salvation. It was no belief of the heart. Sad. Verse 18, same chapter. But those things which proceed out of the mouth. Here we go. Coming forth from the heart. Why does he cuss? Come from the heart. How dare he say those filthy things? Comes from the heart. That Christian telling those jokes comes from the heart. And defile a man. Oh, now here you go. Here's a psychiatric verse. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. For if a man looketh upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her, as he hated his brother in his heart, murders. Listen, video games ain't helping. It ain't going into the brain. It's going into the heart. Murder. That's a good one for today. Adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile men, and they came from the heart. Your psychiatric help is not going to help you with sin. 
If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The way to get rid of your sins in the public schools and the way to get rid of your sins in your own personal life is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, repent and get right and confess your sins and deal with your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. But you can't do that in a public school system because Jesus is not allowed. You can't do it in America because the Bible is forbidden. You can't do it anywhere for God is not wanted. Allah ain't going to help you with your sins. Allah will make you sin even more. Your priest is not going to help you sin. He can't even control himself with little boys. And to cover it up by moving him to another parish is not covering your sins under repentance and the blood of Jesus Christ. Chapter 15, verse 19. And we just read that. What is the root to the problem of our children in the schools today? Heart condition. Drugs is not going to help the children in our schools, Jesus Christ and Calvary and the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures and they would put their faith and belief with their heart upon Jesus and confess Jesus Christ, that will help the school system. That will bring a revival. That ain't not going to ever happen in America. You believe whatever wishy-washy thing you're going to, you will not have a national revival in this country. Chapter 22, 37. You say, what if you're wrong? I'm glad I'll be wrong on that one. If there was a national revival, people got right, then I would be glad, I would be glad to repent of that sin. I don't believe it. 22, 37. This Oh, wait. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said. You care what Jesus said? Many don't. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Oh, there's mind, head. There's your head there. Heart and mind and soul. Do you love God with all your heart? Who gets your time? Who gets your all in all? Who determines how you live? Who gets your money? Who gets your effort? Who's your lips speak about? Who do you brag about? Who's your who and who all? Who do you want? Who do you want to see? Who's your desire? Who's your hope? Who's your glory? All that has to be Lord Jesus Christ. If not, your sin. You sinned against God. You need to repent and get right. Luke 6.45. Luke 6.45. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And I don't do what he tells me to do. That's a lie. You love Jesus and you don't do what he tells you to do. That's a lie. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of good treasures heart bringing forth that which is good. We already talked about this. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringing forth that which is evil. For out of abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Look at that. You're a good man. Your heart is good. You're going to do good things. You're going to do what the Bible tells you to do. Are you an evil heart and do evil things? You're not going to do what the Bible tells you to do. You cannot say you're good. You cannot say you're right with God when you defile the Bible way of living. How's your mouth? What's your mouth say? What's your mouth do? Your mouth will tell you where your side of the Lord is. Again. Again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your actions, your verbs of your life, of what you do and what you say, will say where your treasure is. You can't be fooled. I don't believe I said that. I don't believe I did that. No, yes, you do. That's you. That's who you are. You are a sinner. You are vile. You need to repent and get right with God. 
We've all sinned in this case. We're all evil. Even saved, we're evil. Even under the blood of Jesus Christ, we do evil things. Our heart is not. Listen, listen. Even saved, our hearts, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Even saved, that verse goes to me today. I don't have all the proper good thoughts. I don't have all the proper good ideas. My, uh, my mouth ain't right all the time. My doings are wrong. Aren't you glad 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, aren't you glad that's in there because our heart is too vile? That list I read that Jesus said that comes out of the heart, I do some of them things. Why? Because it's my wicked heart. It's my wicked heart. Luke 9, 47. Don't you think that you, once you're saved, now you're perfected. No way. You just lied. You did a false witness and that came out of the heart, remember? 9, 47. And Jesus perceiving the thoughts of their hearts. Ooh. Jesus, oh wait a minute. You better watch out. You better not out. I'm telling you why. Jesus Christ knows everything you've done. He knows when you've been good. He knows when you've been bad. I'm not singing about Santa. I'm singing about God. I'm not singing about Satan Claus. I'm singing about God. Even if you don't say it, God knows it. Jesus knows it. You could be buttering the person you're up with your lips and your tongue, how great you are, how wonderful you are, and saying in your heart, oh, I hate this guy. Why do I got to put up with this guy? Oh, this guy, get out of my life. And God said, I heard that. I heard that false witness that came out of your heart. Oh, he's my brother. Oh, I wish I could kill him. I wish I'd get rid of him. God said, I wrote that down. I wrote that down. The heart is deceitful above all things. That's pretty wicked. Who can know it? You're going to know that verse by the end of this. How wicked we are. How sinners we are. Just ask your heart. It'll tell you. It'll tell you. Advertising is designed not for your brain. It's designed for your eyes, which is a tool to the heart. Listen, they sell cars with naked women because they know men like cars. They put the handsome men on the soap operas because they know the women watch them. The lust of the flesh, the, the pride of life, and the lust of the eye. Satan's toolbox. And he knows how to direct it to who to be known to be. The heart. Satan has had, I don't know how many people since Adam. But the man and his heart. All the men in the world, all the women in the world, whatever color, whatever nation you come from, wherever you're, you're, you're growing up with, whether it be city, whether it be town or the suburb, all men's hearts for his toolbox is the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He's got three tools. He's got three tools for your heart. The pride of life. Look who I am. Look how intelligent I have. Look how wonderful. See my diplomas. See me. And God says... Remember we read about the tabernacle? The wisdom went into the heart for God. Understanding was in the heart. The pride of life, uh, pride of life. Look how wonderful. I, the, the, the lust of the eyes, advertising, looking around. And whosoever looks upon a woman to lust ever in his heart has already committed adultery. Out of the heart, of the heart Jesus said, was adultery. And it could be for, you know, for a woman, I'm not changing the Bible, for a woman to look after a man to lust after him in her heart. She's committed adultery. How's that? Satan does not have to get you into a bed. Satan doesn't have to get you in the back seat of a car. Satan doesn't have to get you naked with an opposite sex for you to be charged with adultery. Just your heart wants it. The lust of the flesh. Oh, I just heart chocolate. I just love, yeah, yeah, all right. I told you about that symbol of heart, didn't I? Luke chapter 9, 47, we just did that. All right, John chapter 13, verse 2. You got to control your, your, your thoughts, no thoughts. Jesus said in Genesis 6, our thoughts are wicked. Our thoughts are wicked. 
And we can't affumigate it with television and all that. John chapter 13, verse 2. Supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas. Oh boy, look at that. We just talked about Satan, didn't we? You know where Satan goes? He doesn't go through your head. He goes into your heart. Because he knows if he can have your heart, you're not going to give your heart to God. When Jesus said, love the Lord with all your heart. Remember that? Remember we read that in the law? Love the Lord with all your heart. If Satan can get your heart, ye ain't got that heart going to God no more. And that makes him happy. You got to guard your heart. You got to keep your heart after God. Because Satan may come in and try to take it. 14.1, John 14.1. Let not your heart be troubled. I guess you can be troubled. I'm a Christian now, I'm a soldier of the cross, I'll have no more problems. Yea, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Our religion doesn't teach that. We don't sin no more, we don't have any more troubles. Oh, bull. Look what Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. You got a troubled heart? Believe on God and believe Jesus Christ. You got a troubled, oh, what's going to happen when I die? Oh, I got, what's going to in my father's house are many mansions. Think of the future. Think of new heaven. And, and when it talks about the dead in Christ shall rise and those that are alive that should be caught up together in the cloud. At that chapter in uh, Thessalonians, I forget first or second. I get those first and seconds confused. At the end of that chapter, at the end of talking about it, he said, comfort one another with ease. If you got a troubled heart in your life, call another Christian. Get in the Bible. Pray to God. Say, God, oh. Get your heart back on God. Satan might be trying to steal that heart. Acts 5.3. Acts 5.3. Acts 5.3. It's all through the Bible. And we're not even doing most. Remember I told you there's 830 times. And we're just touching this. Like the iceberg touched the Titanic. Acts 5.3 and 4. But Peter said, Ananias. Wait a minute. Why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Satan grabbed Judas' heart. Satan had this man and his wife lie. Lie to God. That's religion. That's Christians who gone into the modern movement. Tell me the story of Jesus. Tell it to me now. And you don't even want to hear it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I... And you don't. You're lying. You're lying to the Holy Spirit. Oh, brethren, I'm just so happy to see you. And you're not happy to see him. I prayed for you last week. You haven't prayed in two months. You're not only lying to the people, but you're lying to the Holy Ghost. And Satan has you done that. I don't like this. Acts 8, 21. Did I hit a nerve? Are you amen? Acts 8, 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for the, thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Your heart may, may not be right. Pharaoh's heart wasn't right. Those who have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ with their heart are not right. If you're lying to God, you're not right. It's possibly to have your heart wrong with God, saved or lost. And you're not going to go to a doctor to get that fixed. Doctor, I'm not having a good walk with God. What shall I do? Well, you see, from the time of beginning, there was nothing, and that nothing exploded. And we became apes, and we had an electric shaver with no power. We shaved all our hair off our bodies, and now we go from ooh, 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 ooh to take two pills and call me in the morning. That ain't going to help you. Here, take this pill. That ain't going to help you. A pill, alcohol, drugs are not going to get you into heaven. They'll get you into hell. And hell forever. You think your life is hell now? Wait, you go into the gates of hell forever. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with thy heart, the Bible says. Chapter 8, verse 37. 
chapter 8, 37. And Philip said, if ye be, if y'all believe it, this verse is removed in Bibles. Modern Bibles do not have what we're going to read. If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10, right there. This Ethiopian eunuch got saved because he believed with his heart. And modern Bibles mess with this verse, remove this verse, change this verse, footnote this verse. They don't like this verse because this verse relies on your heart being saved and not just saying a prayer. So we can say we got 5,000 people saved this weekend. By saying this prayer is not salvation. Believing with the heart. Believing with the heart. The heart is needed for salvation. A man could be on the operating table. They could just remove that heart from his body. And he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ while under anesthesia. And he puts his faith and belief on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he dies at that moment, he will go to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, even though he doesn't have a physical heart. Come on, people. Come on. Romans 1.21. Romans 1.21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. There it is. And their foolish heart was darkened, and there will be no belief. It's a foolish heart. The Bible says in Psalms, the fool has said in his heart, Psalm 14, 1, that there is no God. An atheist from his heart will not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ from his heart. The Bible says he's a fool, he's lost, and he's going to hell. How did he know God? Because he probably heard a preacher preach the gospel to him. And he rejected it. Pharaoh heard what God told him through, through Moses. And he rejected what Moses said. Pharaoh knew God through Moses. These men who have heard the gospel by the preaching of men who preach the gospel, who are saved and going out and doing what God's told you to do, they hear the gospel, they know God. And they will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with their heart. They have rejected. They become a fool. The Bible says you're a fool. You know what a loser is? A loser is one who has not received the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior. That's my definition of loser. You're unsaved, you're a loser. Become a winner. Become on the winning side. With your heart, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Romans 6, 17. Six seventeen. But God be thanked. You better thank God. America don't thank God no more. Woohoo! Thanksgiving Day. Hurry up, get ready. Get the get the things away. Put it in the dishwasher. Hurry up. Can I get take a nap? Because it's Black Friday. Now they have on Thursday. Big grocery stores, big outlet stores will have their, their celebrations now on Thanksgiving for all their prices. That ye were the servants of sin. But ye are, but you have both uh, try it again. But God be thanked that ye were, were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which is believed, delivered unto you. What's that doctrine? The gospel that Jesus saved. What did they do? They obeyed, they believed from the heart. What did Paul say? Thank God. I thank God I'm saved. I thank God with my heart I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't just say a prayer. I didn't just say a prayer. 10-1. Romans 10-1. Romans 10-1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Is it your heart's desire for people to get saved? Is it your heart's desire that someone out there, you are also going out, telling people about the gospel. Your desire is you are building to have someone to lead them to Christ. Somebody out there, oh, my nose is good. 
someone out there is doing something with the gospel in a proper way and people are getting saved. I'm going to support a missionary because they're going out with the gospel. I'm going to encourage a friend in the Lord because he knocks on doors. And he's going to encourage they go out preach on the street. He passes out gospel tracts. She calls people on the phone. They get the gospel out. That's what I want. I want people to get saved. My heart's desire is for people to get out of hell and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I want. How are you in that? Oh, he's going to the field. Go, he's going to kick. Oh, bull. Bull. We're in Daytona Beach. He made a 400 turn around the track 400 times. Who cares? He hit a home run. Who cares? Who cares? My care is that the lost will hear the gospel and, oh, Lord, they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. How's that? How's that for your care? How's that for your heart? 2 Corinthians 9, 7. I mean, second, yeah, Corinthians. So I said Chronicles. I'm excited. I'm excited with the gospel. Glory to God. I'm not shouting. I'm shouting. <laughs> Every man according to the purpose of his heart. So let him give not grudgingly. We already looked at this. Or necessary. For God, love is a cheerful giver. When you give to God, you give it because you want to. You, you, yeah, I don't want to get. Oh, you're making me do it. Preacher preaches about money. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. They don't do it. Don't do it. Do something else. God doesn't want it. Oh, I'm just so happy, ready to go. Let's go. Set the alarm clock. Get all ready. Put the clothes on. Let's go. All right, do it. Oh, if I had more money in my pocket. Glory to God. Glory to God. From the heart. Ephesians 5.19. Ephesians 5.19. Speaking to yourselves in song, in hymn, in spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You can't sing? You got a terrible singer like I am? Are you doing it for the Lord? You know the best thing I do? You, you don't have to do it, but when I'm reading and studying my Bible, I've got instrumental Christian hymns. Or I listen to... Um, I can't even name them. Uh, the water music. Handel. I listen to an instrumental and I'll read in my Bible. You know what I'll do? I'll sing in my heart and quietly on my lips because I can't sing. I won't sing the words that are supposed to be there. I will sing my own words to the Lord. That's what that verse means. I'm going down the road and I'll be just singing whatever I want to sing to the Lord. It's never been written down on paper, and many times I've done that, it has never been written down on paper. I guarantee God writes it down. That man is singing from his heart. That man is joyful in me. That man is making words for me. That pleases the Lord. That pleases the Lord. When it comes from your heart. 6-6. Six, six. Not with eye service, as men please you. But as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. What's that? That's employers. Quick, the boss is coming. All right, look busy. He's gone. All right, solitaire. Boss is coming. Look busy. Oh, the boss is off today. Woo! Put your feet up on the deck. God says, whether the boss is there or the boss is not there, whether the boss is coming in and out, he says, you do your job and you do it where you're supposed to, and you do it for the will of God. What the Bible says for your heart. I've got a job to do. I'd be paid to, to do a job. I'm going to do it because God wants me to do it. That's in my heart. How you, how you doing that one? Oh, got five more minutes. I can slack off and to go kill some time. That's not Bible. That's not Bible. That's not Bible at all. That's not from the heart. You got to give your heart to God and you got to give your heart to your employer for the job that he pays you to do. Oh, how I love Jesus and sit at the water cooler. Oh, how I love Jesus and steal pencils from jobs. You don't love Jesus. Oh, I hate my employer, but I love Jesus. That don't work. It's a sin. You got to put your heart into it. Oh, this job. No, 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 no excuses. God don't take excuses. God don't take excuses. 
Colossians 3.22. You probably hate me by now. You're so mean. <laughs> uh, you liked my life before I heard this message. Colossians 3.22. Servants, that'd be employers, obey in all things your master, that'd be your employer, according to the flesh, not with eye service. See, we just did it. As men please, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. We saw it was to the will of God. Now you're to fear God. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Whether your boss, employees, or whoever is not watching you, you are to do what you do for God wholeheartedly in fearing God. Oh, members of the church are not going to see me pass out gospel tracts, but I don't care. I'm going to pass out gospel tracts and please God. Oh, there's a ministry there that the pastor doesn't do? Well, I'm going to go do it because I'm interested in that ministry. I don't partake of door knocking because my legs can't handle it. My feet can't handle it. And I'm afraid of other people's dogs. And I've had where door knocking, we encountered dogs. But I don't discourage those from knocking on doors. I you know, go for it. But there are people, and we've already talked about this. I don't know if the last one or this part two is there are people do things because they're pastor and the people of the church see them do it and they want recognition for a Tootsie Roll and that don't happen. I'm sorry. You got to do it for God because you want to do it without the rewards, without the gratification, that wait till you get to heaven and have Jesus say, well done. Because if you get your well done here on this planet, you're not going to get it at the judgment seat of Christ. If people would only get that. Hebrews 3.12. Hebrews 3.12. Take heed, uh oh, brethren, save people. Least there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. That's written to save people. As a saved Christian, you can develop unbelief. I'll give you one great idea. King James Bible is not the word of God. That's countless people. That's unbelief. That's in your heart. Plain and simple. The King James Bible is the Word of God. I don't believe that that's what Jesus would do. What would Jesus do? Well, that's in your wicked, evil heart. I don't think that church is right. It's right. you just got a wicked, evil heart. Our hearts of salvation, brethren, can be, we can have a heart of unbelief. Pride would make you think you were good and, and everything, and nothing can happen to you. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God, you know what that is, is quick. That means alive, well, going. And powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the divine asunder of soul and spirit. Spiritual circumcision. And of the joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts, Genesis 6, and the intents of the heart. All right. Ooh, look at that woman. Uh, you committed adultery. Sorry, Lord. Oh I, oh, I can't stand that guy. You hating your brother? Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just such a good Christian. Are you lying to me? Oh, sorry, Lord. You see, what, you see what the scriptures have done today? I brought to you. And you probably won't get rid of them now unless you sear the spirit. When you study the Bible and see what the Bible tells you, then God can use the word of God to come in your sinning. Oh, man. I, I, I could use this money for restaurant. Uh, what? Oh, sorry, Lord. See, we have, and I was going to do a whole bunch of Proverbs. I think Proverbs would be a whole nother study in, not now, not, not this week, but 
no interest studying a Proverbs in the heart. Proverbs is the whole study itself. But let's look at the heart. Let's let's conclude. I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. I study the Word of God. I preach and teach. I'm still a sinner. I still have to confess my sin. My heart is not right all the time. There are times I want recognition. There's times I want the glory. There's times I don't want to do anything. There's the times I get angry. There's the times that I sin and get angry. There's the times I'm impatient. That's my heart. And that's not going to stop till my heart dies. When my heart is stone cold dead inside of a tomb or inside a grave or however I die, then it's never going to have any more problems. But right now, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. God knows my heart. A doctor ain't going to help me. Now, if I got high blood pressure, which I do, I've gone to a doctor and he's giving me high blood pressure medicine. And it works. There's been two or three times in my life I thought I've had a heart attack. And they've taken me to the hospital, one time by ambulance, other time I, dr I was driven. And they hook me up to a machine. They put all these things on you. And they watch the thing. Me, 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 me. Thank God my heart's okay. And they told me my heart's strong. One doctor told me I had a heart as a horse. I don't know what that means. But it must be good. That doctor says my physical heart that pumps my blood is strong as a horse. But the heart that the Bible says I have is not. And I've sinned. And I've gone the way of wickedness. I've gone the way of evil. I've gone the way of unrighteousness. Did the world make me do it? No. Did Satan make me do it? No. My heart within me. From my youth. My heart. Whether I get rapture or I die. The Bible says that God's going to give Israel a new heart. And they won't reject their Messiah. They won't have anything wrong against the Messiah when they get that new heart. And we need to realize when we're witnessing, the Bible says Satan involves in our heart. He can take that seed, the word of God that you preach, out of that heart. He can get into a saved man's heart and lie. He can give into a saved man's heart and discourage. He can get into a saved man's heart and make you not believe any longer. He can get into unsaved people and make them think in their heart that they've said a prayer. But without the heart, there is no belief and there is no salvation. He can make a Christian or a lost man think, oh, I'm given to Jesus. And you're not, according to what God has said. He can put pride in that heart, and there is no pride with God. And we got to examine our heart because no doctor can examine our heart. That stethoscope is not going to see our spiritual condition. But this stethoscope, this Bible, when I open my eyes to this word and put it inside my heart and in my ears, this will say, you've got sin. Then what am I going to do with it? I can ignore it. I can put it off or I can deal with it. I can deal with it according to what the word says. But we have a heart condition. God wants the heart. We can give everything and anything. I can have all the money. I can have all the paper money in America that's ever been made. That's in circulation right now. If I were to have all that money put here right now, and I gave that money to all the missionaries that are right with God, And if I'm upset giving that money, if I'm hindering myself from giving that money, God says, I don't, I don't want it. 
And churches hate that message. But if I were to give all that money out to missionaries and evangelists and churches and schools that are getting the word of God out, and I, I grab a, a, a thing of money, a pack of money, whatever they call it, and I hand it out, I reach over and say, oh, man, I ran out of money. God, I need more to help. It's not enough. Wait a minute, I think I have a dollar in my pocket. Uh, what's ever here? What's ever here? Here, take it. God likes that. God likes that. Lord, I want to go because I want to go and serve you. People are dying and going to hell, Lord, and I want to stop them. I want to prevent them. I want them at least to hear the gospel to get right. I'm going because my boyfriend goes, and it pleases him. And I just love my boyfriend. My mom makes me go. Boy, I tell you, when I get of age, thank God mom makes the, makes the child go, but child, you're not right. Oh, I, I, I got an office in the church, and I have to go. That's not right. Again, it, it, it's something I say. It's not how great I am. It's how great thou art. 